The following is a presentation of Geekster Media. Hey there, and welcome to another edition of the Thrift Store Horde. This is another two-hander here. That's right. You got Adam, and we got Kevin. What's going on, people? I missed the last episode. I was traveling. I had some commitments I had to do. So it kind of balances out here that Adam and I are only here on this one. And then next month, hopefully, it'll be all three of us once again. Exactly. But the, the I, I think I have enough stuff. Usually Chris is the one who's like overflowing with piles of new items. I've been real lucky lately. Uh, it's garage sale season, as we've been saying the last few months, and garage sales have been very good to me. Let, let me just put it that way. So so we, we have a lot to, to get into. But Kevin, I know that you were doing some traveling also. So that's why I'm curious to see what you might have picked up while you were out and about. But where do you want to start? What do you got? All right. I, I have divided mine into three uh, with a theme going on here. Um, and I, I think I'll go from what I was least excited overall about to most excited. So that'll be my thing. So I'm, I'm going to start if that's all right. Yeah, uh, I, I'm going to go ahead and start with uh, the random books that I found. And uh, one DVD, it doesn't quite fit with anything else. So I've just thrown in the DVD with the books. Um, so I'll start with that. I found a random Simpsons Treehouse of Horror DVD. Always my favorite episodes. Even like we all fell off the Simpsons over time. But I would still tune in for Treehouse of Horror every year, no matter what. Uh, so number five, six, seven, and then randomly 12. <laughs> like it's not even in order i'm not sure and then we have some sort of special feature of kang and kodos as well Ooh. yeah um so what do we got uh oh my god we have the el gore bill clinton one on here he'll go back that far uh groundskeeper willie as freddy krueger uh to, to principal skinner serving up the students for lunch nightmare cafeteria oh homer and the shining okay yep i remember that one very vividly uh and is this the one yep montgomery burns as dracula as the um bram stoker's dracula from what was that 94 95 for the actual yeah. movie for i've oh, just my... started binging the talking simpsons podcast from the beginning so i'm having a lot of fun like going through especially when they hit those halloween episodes they go real deep in detail so yeah, I mean, always one of the best ones and just full of pop culture stuff. So I love those. Uh, kind of going with Treehouse of Horror theme, and I didn't intend it to. I have never read these. Um, I've wanted to for years, and it was always one of those, like, maybe one day um, uh, ex-girlfriend years and years ago had it, and I still never read it. Um, so I had the random set here, and I picked it all up. Bonicula. Okay. Holiday Inn. My wife loves that one. Yep, and the celery stalks at midnight. <laughs> I I've never read any of them. But I mean, they're they're super short. They're kids' books, but it's like kids safe horror. Um, and I just feel like I I have to at some point. Like it feels like part of. It feels like I should have read these when I was a kid. Yeah, I gotta didn't. check them off the list. Yeah, yeah. So I saw all of them. I'm like, you know, if I only saw one, I may not have. But seeing all of them together, I'm like, this is fate. I'm supposed to grab this. Um. <laughs> I'll grab that in a moment. On that. Uh, I I draw sometimes, like not really to post online, but just like with my son just goofing around or for my own benefit, amusement and all. And I never feel good enough, but I always will grab stuff to try. And I saw this and just looked beautiful. It's a how to draw manga book. And it just looked like really nice and really made sense and everything. And I can do a cartoony style more than I can do like a realistic style or even like a Jim Lee style or something like that. So I'm like, oh, maybe I'll play around with it one day. The, the, the maybe future list, you know, all the other things I maybe do, will do one day. Uh, I showed it before. There was a uh, book that came out called Paperbacks from Hell. And it was just kind of going over like horror paperbacks over the years. So anytime I find a random weird one, I'll grab it. So I found Bone Grinder whoa uh for the parents of the town 
Well, no. For the parents of the torn form that had been a boy, it was a tragedy. For the merchants in the sleepy Ozark resort, it was a gold mine. But for the sheriff who had to deal with the army of thrill seekers drawn by the bone grinder terror, it was worse than a nightmare. Billy Winto knew this count knew this country, and he knew Bone Grinder was no legend. Something was out there. I have no clue, but I had to crack this. This could be terrible. It could be fun, but I was like, I don't see what it is. Um, in researching, I love to find out like the history of the horror, the sci-fi stuff like that. So I found this was definitely an old library one, and not from one of the ones I've worked at, but uh, the science fiction handbook. Oh. Yeah, and I mean, it's it's beat up and everything, of course. It was a discarded one. Uh, 1953, it's by L. Sprague de Camp, who I believe wrote other things. But it's it's literally a history of, like, the pulps and going back to Mary Shelley and what they were doing at the time of the 50s and all. Um, and uh, Harlan Ellison's my favorite sci-fi writer. He's Someone's taken a bunch of his clips and thrown them up on TikTok, but he was, like, hard sci-fi. Like, hard sci-fi needs to be science-based with like a little extra and talk about something for society like it's it's revealing something current but doing it through the lens of sci-fi you get like that classic star trek episode of like we're half white half black but you're half black half white we can't get along like it's got to be something like that so this is that air of sci-fi and like very very deep in depth i'll learn a lot what have i read it god knows when <laughs> um i love I've not read a whole lot of Stephen King novels, but I've read a lot of his ideas on writing, his ideas on pop culture, all that. And I found this, Bare Bones, Conversations on Terror with Stephen King. Oh, So it's collections of interviews that he did and just like his idea of what horror is, what writing is, what all that. I'm like, well, that looks fascinating. I love his opinions on things, but I can't. I haven't sat down to read like all of it or the stand or anything like that, but I just love how his mind works. Um, and then my last two for books, I just, I found these and I was like, oh my gosh, these are so cool. Um, I believe we've all found like big little books randomly, but these were authorized TV adventures from Whitman. So I found a Green Hornet one. Oh, yeah. And I was just like, oh my God, these like, look, at that's just the inside page. Oh. And I'm like, I'm not even like that huge a Green Hornet fan, but I was just like, this is too cold. Uh, 1966 for And then I found another one, Doc Savage one for it. Same idea and everything. And I mean, like, it's super easy read, probably. There's lots of, you know, like, random art on a page and stuff. But I was just like, that's too cool. You know, and I mean, these were like 10 cents, I think, something like that, <laughs> if that even. Like, they're beat up. I don't care. Like, I'm going to have a blast reading them, probably get through it in an afternoon. But I just love random stuff like that. That is my book pile. I dropped some from the other pile, obviously, while we were going on. But Adam, show me what you have, and I'll, I'll fix my stack here. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll show you a couple books I picked up. One, uh, I actually already had a copy of this. This was slightly nicer. We were traveling, stopped at a garage sale, and found this Harry and the Hendersons novelization that's a hardback and uh we're looking at it's a weekly reader book and when i put this up online i was just sharing it on my ex account and like sean robert and a bunch of our other retro friends were hopping in like oh yeah paxton holly does i read movies they were trying to determine like the nature of this book where did it come from all the questions because like they had like the full like just paperback version and so anyway so that was just kind of cool to find um, um libraries uh -huh. will get exclusive hardbound ones oh because the hardback will stay in good condition longer so that it could have been like an original library version or something say, we should ask longer. you <laughs> <laughs> all right um the other one here this was just a fun find but the iron man 2 novelization whatever i can get the x-men movie novelizations whatever i think i have a v for vendetta one um recently i uh had the karate kid part two junior novelization but i found like you know the point novelization so slightly thicker a little bit more in depth i'm going to assume so I, someday i want to read both and just get a comparison between them because it was the same thing when the shadow came out there's like you know the 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 younger readers version and the more in-depth one up uh, this one i just grabbed purely for the art on the cover 
because it has this girl with this super 80s hairdo skateboarding. <laughs> rebel, rebel, baby. <laughs> the girl is, is that is that all hair? Does she have like a bandana? No, I'm pretty sure that's all hair. This is like, I don't know, <laughs> Joe from Facts of Life. Like, what are we doing here? Uh, this was neat. This is just uh, stickers and seals. It's literally just pages of stickers. There's like one or two missing on each page, it feels like. But either way, there's just some classic stuff. What year was this one from? Uh, this is from 1986. But it feels like the art might have been older, this Matthew Kalmanoff. <laughs> but that was just kind of fun when you find stickers still intact. Um, this is what I'm just going to share. So I was at a garage sale. There was this whole small town by me, and they were doing like a town-wide garage sale. So I was just there for hours driving through the streets. And one of the places had a box that was filled with binders, okay? And if you remember what we used binders for in the 80s and 90s, it was collecting cards, right? And he had so many different card sets in there. There was like the Dinosaurs TV show. There were Wildcats cards. There were like just comic book, general pop culture, whatever. So one of the ones I picked up, I've already shared uh, in a video I did for the Wax Pack flashback where I was opening up American Gladiators trading cards. It was the full set of American Gladiators, which was awesome. But with this one had the price tag that said free. I had to know why. And that is because this guy was no longer a new kids, a new kids on the block fan. I might get this in here. Yeah. So new kids on the block. This is like, it's not a complete set, but it's like almost every card in here of new kids on the block. I'm an unabashed fan. I always have been. So I was so excited to get this for free. <laughs> it's even, they got a little label there. This looks like it was one and two. Um, I'm going to go through a few bulkier items real quick just to kind of get them out of the way, too. Um, so, again, at this uh, same place, they had like a whole table that was full of board games. They had puzzles and all this stuff. So I was able to grab this He-Man puzzle still sealed. OK, never use vintage He-Man puzzle. Very cool. Um, there was also... Mighty Men and Monster Maker. Do you have this? No, I can. Um, I, I, I cannot implicate certain people. I have a story for you later. Okay. But this, this was referenced in the last week. Oh, in I, a good way, but it's just it's not my place to tell the story public for. But I'll tell you yeah. later. <laughs> I, I got this at a garage sale when I was a kid, and I had one. It was already kind of an old thing then, right? Uh, but I had so much fun with it. My five-year-old, I brought it home to him and he was instantly mesmerized. Like he just, so he spent like an hour just doing every combination. He's like, I'm making comics. And he started folding pages and like, so that was pretty neat. Uh, I did pick up another Superman puzzle here. I, I got some Spider-Man ones last time and now I got Superman. So this was some pretty good looking classic art. I don't know if that's Jose Luis Garcia Lopez. It kind of looks like a standard Superman, but I'm not sure. There, there's a little burn in there, but... Yeah, I would just say it doesn't, doesn't have a signature or anything. So you, you know what it looks like? It looks like someone we're familiar with, but someone different inked them. Maybe so, yeah. Um... These were just fun, a fun fight at Goodwill recently, but these were uh, Universal Studios Monsters Valentines. So I don't know what year these are from because I can't find, I like it has copyright information, but I haven't broken the seal. It's kind of like behind this flap. So I don't know how vintage these are. If these are just, you know, are they 90s? Are they early 2000s? Somebody out there knows, I'm sure. But I was like, two sealed packs? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Send them to my friends this Halloween. Um, I was talking about that that table of board games earlier, and they were like a dollar. Like th they were selling them for nothing. How about a sealed Gargoyles board oh. game? <laughs> That's beautiful. Isn't that awesome? I mean, and look, it's like it's got like a three tier deal to it. There, like so cool. So. Yeah, that, that was a fun find where I was just like, I can't believe you don't know what this is worth. <laughs> um, and I also was able to pick up another copy of Ping Pong. My family loves it still. My kids always want to play Ping Pong. So I was like, there's another one. Thank you. Grab that. Um, 
Let me see if there's, I, I have so many bulky items. I'll, I'll, I'll do a couple more here. Uh, how about the Radio Shack radio controlled puppy? <laughs> yeah. So this is a, a little fluffy, this puppy in there and you move him around. Unfortunately, I did put batteries in him and he just doesn't work. He's not like broken. It's clean. Everything is fine in there, but there must be some connection on the inside that just came undone. But maybe there's somebody out there that's super nostalgic for this and they'll get a chance at it on my eBay store. Um, also this, you know, I had the girl talk earlier. How about a vintage caboodle? This is from like 91, 92, something like that. I mean, how many of us had cousins or friends or neighbor girls or whatever that had all their makeup in these things right so that was just that was just a fun find to take me back there uh now this one i found one of these before but it was an off-brand mini keyboard this is the official casio keyboard and you might recall this little ditty Oh, I rocked out to this song so many times as a kid. Anyway, so I was so happy to find what was working. Guess what? That was also free. That was in the free box at the same place I got the Gargoyles uh, board game. So anyway, that was that was just a great time all around running to all those those uh, those houses in that city. So got more to come, but let's get back to you, Kevin. So our our local places will any binder, they toss out whatever's in there and just sell the binder. Oh, I'm like that's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, like there's got to be cool stuff in there, but, but like whatever. I, I'm the one that caused them to change their prices, anyways. So. <laughs> the, the The rule used to be um, paperbacks were 10 percent of the original cover price. So I'm like, well, this was 50 cents when it came out. So it's five cents and all that. I'm like, I'm spending like a quarter and getting a stack of stuff. And they yeah. got mad. So now it's 50 cents flat out for any paperback. They got mad at me. Oh, well. Okay. I found a bunch of random cool VHS stuff. Yes. Yep. So what order do I want to do this in? I'll do like that. Okay. Um. So it's. I haven't played it yet. I'm assuming it's actually in Japanese because everything else is. But apparently the manga is making a comeback, but it is Slam Dunk, which is a basketball anime. Wow. And so, I mean, it's been out long enough to have a VHS of it, but randomly, like, volumes one through five of, of the manga are re-released. I'm not quite sure why. Hmm. So, I mean, like, there's a lot of sports manga animes out there. It's just like, oh, I struggled to be part of the team. And then we went, just like our, you know, Teen Wolf or whatever. <laughs> like same idea but i got based on everything i'm imagining it's in japanese i have no idea if there's subtitles or not but i'm like yeah, i'll check it out maybe it looks cool who knows well it looks very influenced by the chicago bulls obviously oh absolutely yeah <laughs> for sure um i don't know if i care but i saw it so i grabbed it but uh the best of mike myers on saturday night live and i'm like a lot of these i haven't seen in forever but i might check it out and all i do remember um randomly my mom was up late one night like she watched news and i switched over to saturday night live and they did the mike myers simon well you know my name yep. is simon and she popped she's like i have not heard that song since you were a little kid and it was whatever thing i was watching like early nickelodeon or pbs or something had it and she she went nuts for it i'm like <laughs> that's that's generational talent right there <laughs> um how do i want to do this um it's probably trash but i was just it was cool to find it but an elvira midnight madness thing the hideous sun demon nice and i, I mean again so Elvira, it's probably trash and all but these things are fun and they, they go out of print like so fast too this one's a rhino home video mm -hmm. i don't even know if rhino is doing anything anymore but i remember they used to be like have everything cool uh i don't think um, uh, we listen to a podcast that talks about old cartoons, and I don't know if there's anything more than this one episode, but Dino Riders. Cool. So it's just the one episode, 27 minutes, including Tyco commercials. Oh, I wonder what they have commercials for. So I kind of feel like it was just the pilot, and it didn't go anywhere from there, if I recall. But the, like Dino Riders is such a cool 
Well, and I'll tell you, I just saw that at my local thrift store, but in the case. So it was marked oh, up really? like $5. I'm like, no, thank you. <laughs> um, I have not watched this ever. And I feel like one day I should. And I realize it's probably trash, but I saw the live action Street Fighter. So I cracked it. Uh, it is fun. It's the it's the best kind of trash. <laughs> okay. Okay. Then it's right up my alley. Then yeah. for, uh, what do I want to do? All right, speaking of trash, I loved this movie when I was a kid. I found it somewhere online to watch at one point. And if you know it, it's fun. If you don't know it, I cannot explain it in a good way. I mean, I can, but it's not good. Avenging Force. Oh. Have you ever seen Avenging Force? No, I, I've no seen other? clips from Avenging Force, oh, but I've not seen all of it. God. So you, we got these characters in the background here. And it's Michael Dudikoff, legend. But his friend is murdered. And it's pretty much like, you know, most dangerous game. Like they're hunting men. But they all got their like little gimmick and their area of their like hunting ground that they're the expert on, the swamp land, the forest land, the whatever and all. So it's just flat out like 80s revenge movie, but kind of with like villains that you could make toys out of. And it's, it's a hard R. It is a hard art for the violence all. I remember watching it when I was a kid on HBO and like just thinking it was the coolest movie ever. So <laughs> found a copy of it. Um, I don't have anything to go with it. So I'm missing part of the fun, but I found a Captain Power. Yeah. I have no Captain Power toys. I don't know if like my Roku remote would do anything with it or something <laughs> like that. I was like, I'll see. Um, this is weird. And I don't know if I have the time to watch it, but it's Star Wars. What? It's it's a documentary about all the people camping out for episode one. Wow. And 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 everything going on around it. It's put out by Film Threat, which was the magazine that Chris Gore founded. Chris Gore is on attack of the show doing like all the DVD stuff. But Chris Gore didn't make it. So there was more people working for Film Threat than I realized. And it came from some rental place because look at how it's cut too yeah. like, it's the weirdest thing um so I, I had to grab it it is 80 minutes and extra extras runtime 10 minutes a separate listing on it because oh and we get a quick blurb with kevin smith like they were doing anything they could to market this i'm sure it's terrible but i was just too curious speaking of terrible deke era gi joe but sealed of, sealed still yeah Infested Island and Chunnel. And I swear to God, there was a third. Like, I, I have some vague recollection. No, I, I have the other one. Yeah, I have it on my shelf. Okay, so there was I, a so I have Chunnel and I have the other one. I don't have that first one you shared, though. Infested Island? No, I don't have that one. Okay, so there was a third. I mean, God, like, even the graphics are terrible on it. Yeah. Um, This I found, I'm shocked, like... Maybe it wasn't, I forgot. I am shocked this was not a special Purple Stuff podcast episode. I already sat down to watch it. It's so cool as a time as a as a time capsule. Fangoria's Weekend of Horrors. Oh, great find. Oh my god, it's fascinating. It's only an hour long. It it's early, like con footage and all. Every everyone's there just having a good time and all. Uh Robert England, Rick Baker, Tobe Hauer, uh Elvira, obviously. Um, to, to, to do Forrest J. Ackerman, of course, is on here. You know, like I when I discovered Forrest J. Ackerman, I'm like, oh my god, like this is what we would have been back then. You know, like absolutely fascinating. But I was like, that is the coolest thing. Well worth the watch. It's Comic Con weekend as we record this, not yeah. to timestamp and all. But I was like, this would have been so cool. This would have been awesome to go to. Like I, we trade stuff on the show. If people don't know, we trade stuff. This is staying. Sorry. Yeah, I figured. I can't even can't even make an offer on that one. <laughs> no, that one's staying. All right, that is my VHS pile for my last pile. Kind of segues from VHS and then some other random stuff. But Adam, what do you have next? Okay, wow, yeah, those are great finds. Um, 
VHS has been very good to me as well. I was going through a real dry spell where like all my local stores just like stopped either getting new stock or stopped carrying it all together. And then they changed their minds. They're like, nope, we're back. So, and also a lot of the garage sales I've been going to, I've been finding them. Uh, so the, these first ones are just kind of like general titles, but I mean, this box for Gattaca was so awesome. I was just like, whoa, that's all, that's just a great, because there, there were several of those like late nineties, early two thousands. Uh, I found Found this just at a garage sale the weekend that Twisters hit theaters. I'm not going to go see that movie, but I was like, might as well grab the original while I'm here. Uh, copy of Silence of the Lambs, because why not? I just there, there's a lot of like classics where I've just overlooked them, so I'm trying to fill the void here and there, and just be like, I, I should have them as reference. Uh, there's this one, Wolf Lake. This is from Star Maker. I just grab all the Star Maker gold border tapes when I can. Um, Evolution with David Duchovny. I've always heard good things, but never saw that one. Uh, this was an interesting one. I got this at an estate sale where mostly I was grabbing a home recorded VHS. There was some really fun stuff there. It ended up being a lot of wrestling tapes, actually, from like 2003 era. Um, but this was Transformers Beast Wars, but it's in a sealed, just nondescript package. I asked around online about this. Chad Young said he thought he remembered being at like a KB thing. Like if you bought a toy, they would give you the tape to go with it type thing. So I don't know if that's for sure, but uh, that was an interesting idea. Uh, this was fun. A copy of Fritz Lang's Metropolis. But this is like an old, I don't know if this is the Giorgio Moroder one. Let me see. Yeah, it doesn't say for sure. But it's, yeah, there's so many different versions of that. So many different releases. Uh, this was great. I love my RCA Columbia's Midnight Express. Uh, not to be confused with Midnight Run, which is hilarious. This one I hear is a little intense. So <laughs> Midnight Express, uh, we'll see how that goes when I decide to watch it. But another RCA Columbia. How about Hanky Panky? Yes, yeah, so a couple on screen and off with Gilda Radner and Gene Wilder. I was just watching the Gene Wilder. Uh, I actually had listened listened to the audiobook of his audio bi bi uh, autobiography like, what, 10 years ago or something. And they made basically a, uh, with Mel Brooks, they did a documentary about that. This was fun, though. Senior Trip, Mickey Rooney and Scott Bayo. Huh? Never heard of this one, but I got to <laughs> check it out. Because I know... That there was that National Lampoon senior trip, right? Yep. Yeah, but yep. this this is this is obviously like late seventies, early eighties, probably early eighties. This was a classic, though. How about Teenage Devil Dolls? Mammy Van Doren there, whatever. <laughs> That's just fun. But this is like an early Rhino video release, which I didn't know they were doing stuff back then. Um, this was the like one of the few hard cases I found. This is a Thorn EMI of uh, volunteers years before we even started doing this show i had one of those i can't remember where i found it and then i i must have gotten rid of like i haven't seen it in years so i must have gotten rid of it at some point but yeah it was that white case and everything and it was just fascinating to find it in that format and all yeah, because like a lot, usually those are cut box releases, but Thorny and I put them out in that way. Like I have a Rambo too, yep. you know, like stuff like that. <laughs> um, speaking of Rambo too, how about some Stallone? So I picked up a copy of Cobra. I've never seen this one. The infamous cutting pizza with scissors. I've heard about. I, I got to see this for myself. This was a strange one. Partners with Ryan O'Neill and John Hurt. Uh, this is I. I no idea, but this is obviously like trying to do like a mismatched buddy comedy in the 80s. Ryan O'Neill is not the funniest guy, so <laughs> we'll see. Uh, Camp Nowhere. So I just recently found a copy of Bushwhacked. You know, I got I got Bushwhacked fever, like, like Chad's always telling us. Now I have Camp Nowhere to compare. Uh, I was able to pick up two Mighty Mouse uh, VHS tapes, which is fun. They only have one like uh you know crossover crossover is the right word but you know it only doubles up on one of the uh the adventures this one just because it was dom deloise and a real cheesy family film called the brainiacs.com what could this be about we'll find out but the internet was new and you could make a movie about it um perfect target you know you see so you had your movie here 
But this is uh, Daniel Bernhardt here and Robert England. You can't quite see them, but Robert England was in this. So I want to find out what the story was. I mostly know this guy from uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000. He was, he started what he's like almost Van Damme, but not. I think he filled in in some of the kickboxer films for Van Damme. Uh, this one was just still sealed with the price tag on it. Alexander, the director's cut, I've never seen it, <laughs> but uh, there it is. Uh, how about Scrooge? One of my CBS Fox releases. That's great for Christmas time. Um, this Richard Pryor movie, Which Way Is Up, where he's like pulling at Eddie Murphy long before Eddie Murphy. He's playing multiple characters in different costumes in this film. Plus, it's a super old like MCA yeah. release. So that was neat. Uh, this one I had to grab. I grabbed only because of the sticker. I shared this online, but it said Star Power. And who are the stars? How about Lachlan Monroe? There he is. He, I only know him from Night of the Roxbury. We have Lou Diamond Phillips and then uh, Glenn Plummer. Sorry, Glenn, never heard of you. But it uh, looks like a very interesting, strange movie. And this is, yeah, this is early 2000s. So it's just like, never heard of it. Gonna find out what it's about. Another another sealed one here, the Arlington Road, Tim Robbins and Jeff Bridges. Anybody? I mean, it's still factory sealed and everything, but it got it got four stars from the New York Daily News. Um, so this one I was going to share uh, real quick. Actually, I'll, I'll get these two Disney ones out of the way. Wild Hearts can't be broken. I said, why not? I've heard that so many times. There was a Simpsons episode called Wild Barts can't be broken. Mm -hmm. I remember that this is like the tour tape to Disney world from 1999. So for anybody who traveled, I didn't go there until I think 2005, 2006, maybe. Uh, but that was my first time around. So um, my thrift store that started stocking new VHS, they did something really interesting, or at least the stock they got in was from an old uh, rental store because it was in these cases that pop from the bottom and the, but it's like super hard case like really really heavy duty and so this is don't go in the house you know just an, an old classic horror film obviously um but i was really just surprised by the quality of the cases and my store what they did was they taped them all together so you had to buy a brick of like six tapes that were all taped together and i was just like i looked at all the titles i'm like oh i need all of these but not not because like they're just kind of rare in a weird way like garage days i've never heard of garage days but it says right here from the director of the crow and i robot what alex proyas what it did garage days don't know we'll find out about it um then there was also shadow of the vampire which as i understand it this is like out of print or something like it's hard to find oh. a copy of shadow of the vampire out there i may have got some misinformation but <laughs> it's really good too yeah I've, I've always heard good things about it um team america uh i've never seen it either i didn't go to theaters for this one but it, mike on Wiz the wizards podcast that i do he was telling me his mom thought that movie was hilarious and i was just like really <laughs> your mom's got a good sense of humor i guess um but also in that collection was a copy of south park speaking of which but right before that at a garage sale i picked up another copy this one i picked up because look at all the warnings that they put on this thing you know parents please be advised that south park is wow. intended for mature audiences right but th you know this one doesn't have any of that so no yeah so that was just really fun to find um let's make sure there's none that fell down no so the last two though these were my big money literally uh, i i saw them this is why i grabbed the stack you were just talking about the anime you found how about some vampire hunter d like these are sought after tapes like you, you know they will sell absolutely but just again i got more of these cases in there but like even inside the case they're still in the plastic so like th these are really well preserved copies so that was really nice to find that because yeah the, the, don't come along you know very often those anime tapes that are kind of sought after and rare so anyway but yeah vhs has been a lot of fun lately <laughs> um and the like the crazy thing with anime i'm not i like anime but i'm not a huge like deep dive anime i'm not like up to date on stuff i just i'll see something i like and i'll watch it 
but like I just watched Cowboy Bebop all the way through for the first time last year and I'm like this still holds up like it's however old it is but it's still beautiful Vampire Hunter D what used to be like a late night sci-fi channel anime one gorgeous animation still to this day unreal good finds yeah all right so this this tangents off of VHS and then I have two weird ones (laughs) so it's not actual VHS it was McDonald's teaming with Disney to do, do you already know where I'm going? I do, I do. To do their VHS looking toys. And these are like McDonald's toys, any fast food toys are not what they were by any means. These are beautiful. And it looks like I didn't do a deep dive if I have all of them, but I think I might. And I have, uh, like, it doesn't look like anyone played with them. It doesn't look like... Yeah, they're in great them. shape. The boxes are in wonderful shape. Like, I have no clue what I'm going to do with these, but I couldn't pass them up. And, like, I mean, how are these in a Happy Meal? Not in a Happy Meal, but you know what I mean. Like, yeah. they're absolutely, like, I would, you'd pay, what, like, 10, 15 bucks at a store right now for the for this quality mm-hmm. and this size and all? And like, even Albert, like, that's, I would say Alvern Company's obscure still yeah. to this day. So I just could, I got eight of them. I could not believe it. Again, I have no idea what I'm going to do, but I couldn't just leave them there. Someone's going to, if, if it's not me, someone's going to love these. Yeah. Like I had to. Speaking of, I had to. Sometimes I'll grab stuff because it's weird. And then the more and more I go about it, the weirder and weirder it gets. I'm not mocking. I know. I'm not mocking, I'm not whatever, but I was just losing it in tears laughing and I had to get it. So the book's called When Dinosaurs Die. Okay. Okay. Does the does the style you Adam, you have children? Does the style of drawing look at all familiar to you? Yeah, Arthur. Yes, this is from the creator of Arthur. Wow. And his wife. Apparently, they have a whole series, which also includes How to Be a Friend. It's on the back. How to Be a Friend, Democracy for Dinosaurs, this one, and Dinosaurs Divorce. <laughs> so, Arthur, wonderful cartoon. It's done a lot for kids. Great. Timeless thing and all. This doesn't quite hit the mark. I'm not making fun of tragedy at all. I just have to point out stuff for the book. So it goes through how people could, sorry, how dinosaurs could die for a kid. And I'm sure there's some kid that this got them through everything and all. But as a 40 something, you know, so people die for many reasons and all. Including, I thought this was a bit graphic, getting hit by a freaking car. Whoa! And how big are these cars that could hit a dinosaur? Yeah. I mean, well, just everybody were, just were, crowding around. There's a yeah, of- dinosaurs are what? How many school buses long? So these cars must be huge. So they have like, hey, other religions have different funeral customs. So if we go for this dinosaur world, did we have dinosaur religious figures yeah. as well? Like, how far are we going with this? But the thing that got me is we're at a funeral and everyone's talking. Oh my, I didn't know Morosaurus had <laughs> so many friends. Morosaurus? <laughs> Morosaurus got me. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do with this book, but I'm losing it. Like, I have to I have to share this absurdity with someone else. Like, I have to. I'm debating showing my kid and just being silly with it. And I don't get, know. Get I'm his like, honest reaction, yeah. I'm not mocking death. I'm not mocking the creators, anything, but just for 40 something, this was absurd for I'm me. I'm just imagining that in the Arthur Reddit somewhere or the moderator on some Arthur fan board, you know, like message board, it's Morosaurus. That's the that's the one who's running everything. It's <laughs> someone's username. He's like, that he's, he knows the deep cuts. <laughs> I, I would not doubt it. All right, Adam. We've discussed this off air and on. I don't need to do a new collection. Not at all. I understand the appeal of vinyl. Totally get it. 
I don't need to start doing that at all. Don't need to. But then I see something and it's beautiful. And then I see that it's dirt cheap because no one wants it. I'm like, oh God. All right, I'm getting it. So my culmination here is my first record. Wow. Because <laughs> I had to. And it fits in with us and it fits in with wizards. Oh. It fits in with everything. Do you know, Adam, that there is a thing, apparently at least once, known as a comic book soundtrack? Oh. Hmm. You're supposed to put this on and read your comics with it. Wow. It's a fairly recent one. It's not part of Wizards yet. Dark Knight's death metal soundtrack. What? Wow. This is beautiful. I've not opened it up yet. It's a two album blue vinyl. So the vinyl's like shiny blue, perfect and everything on it. Beautiful cover. I don't know what I'm doing with it yet, though. Like, I haven't like, opened it. Like, somehow authorized. Like, this is actual DC. This is official. Yeah. This is official from DC Purchase. Uh, it's got the beautiful Greg Capullo art on the front and everything. Um, uh, the, the Mastodon, Tyler Bates, who does tons of music on everything. Rise Against is on here. Um, like, there, there, there's bands I know, but that was, they're, like, the big ones. And I play, I found the soundtrack on Spotify and was just kind of messing around with it. I'm like, oh, this is heavy. And Dark Knight's uh, Death Metal, I actually really dug. It was just crazy and everything, but I really dug it. And I must have read it online because I know I don't have a copy of it. I got to find another copy because I want to, like, reread it with this album. But, like, the inside could be beautiful. I, I don't know. And I don't want to do a vinyl collection. <laughs> I don't want to. But this was like $2 sealed because no one wanted it. I'm like, oh, comic record. That's stupid. And I'm like, art alone, this is worth $2. Yeah. But like, I don't like maybe someone else would want it. I should keep it sealed. Maybe I end up buying a record player, which I really don't want to do. But I don't know what to do with it. But I couldn't just leave it there. I don't know if I'm the good home for it or if someone else is, but the, I, I I had to get it. Like this is funny. so well, pretty. All the best luck with your restraint on starting a vital collection. I'm trying. And, and when you see me in a few weeks, if I have an arm full of vinyl, just smack me. <laughs> well, then I hope you'll forgive me because oh. I happen to have some vinyl. <gasps> Look at that. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> So this morning I went garage sailing and I found this guy at his house 50 cents for each LP in a box under the table. Kiss Alive 2. Okay, I did not have this yet for my collection. This is their second live album. For those who don't know, uh, this is just a great, great collection. I recently on the Geekster Geek Out podcast was interviewing Jay from Sludge Central, and he was talking about how this is one of the pictures that just like solidified his fandom for Kiss. I absolutely loved that episode. I learned so much about Kiss from that episode. That was educational, fun, like phenomenal episode. But the fact that that's 50 cents. Not that you would have, you know, you're very smart with what you pick up, but that's something that someone would spend $50 for. Yeah. Well, it, that's the records unreal. inside are like pristine, like they're in wonderful condition. They still have the paper sleeve and everything in there. So like that, that's what all his records were in great condition. I actually got a, a second Kiss album. I already had a copy, but it's kind of beat up. And this one just kind of had a, a better cover, you know, cover. Yeah. Love Guns, my favorite Kiss uh, you know, vintage Kiss album. So yeah, they try to drop out of the bottom. Unfortunately, he played it a lot, so it's coming apart here. Uh, but either way, just like the looks of it is great. Um, but then also in the mix, Great White. Okay, Great White's a band I've heard about a lot. Uh, this is Shot in the Dark. But the real reason I grabbed it is look at these band photos and look at look at this guy right here with a pistol in his hand. <laughs> this guy's got a pool cue. Like this is. <laughs> Just a great, great look for an 80s metal band, hard rock band. Uh, speaking of which, how about Molly Hatchet? Oh, these guys, man. <laughs> then uh, this was crazy here. The Pirates. 
Okay, never heard of the Pirates, but this feels like this is a semi-rare album out of their skulls. And in this little blurb right here, it says their first album in 15 years. Like, they do look a little out of shape. They do look like they have been playing for a while. I got to do some research on the Pirates, but that was just such a great logo. Um, also, uh, this was, this is Kiss related. So this is a band called Megaforce. And if, if you remember that movie, there is a, there is a movie called Megaforce, right? Is that what it was? Megaforce, yeah. Megaforce. So they, they do the, the title track for that. And, um, so this, this is the band. They're kind of goofy looking guys, but the main singer songwriter guy, his name is Todd Howarth. And he joined Ace Frehley's band when Ace Frehley quit Kiss. And so this is like a piece of my Kiss collection now. Like you, you get all the tie-in albums. <laughs> he was in Freely's Comet. Yeah, he was in Freely's Comet. Um, these guys though, the Meat Men. What is going on here, rock and roll? <laughs> Let me. I'm just gonna give you some of the names of their uh, songs here. Rock and Roll Juggernaut, Five Bees in the Bonnet of the Human Race, True Grit, Gunaholic, Kami Hating Insane, Centurions of Rome, Shock Troopers for Julius the Caesar Man, French People Suck, They Can Stick the Eiffel Tower. So these are all quotes from their, these are lyrics from their songs. Come on over to Ma crib hearty rowdy rock'em sock'em sounds nature boy meat is murder you know it's true dick strudel sex panic in the air what <laughs> the sweetest kittens have the sharpest claws those vicious rabid feline fiascos these guys <laughs> you, know, just... you know when we do you know when we do wizards where you fan me as a guest or i come and i get and it's like, oh, Kevin's the greasy one and all. That is like... Just concentrated. Yeah. It was insane. <laughs> but to wash all of that out of our minds, how about the Strawberry Shortcake Alphabet record <laughs> for the kids? Is this, all the, this was all the same person? No, this one was from a different oh. so. <laughs> <laughs> Um. So... Uh, I'm going to share uh, two things real quick. So also, I have to pick up things to play my music on. I did pick up this boombox uh, just to have a backup. So I, I have that ready to roll. Um, and I also, at Goodwill recently, found Radio Shack, just a cassette recorder still in the box. It was in great shape. It actually still had batteries in it, and it worked. So I was just like, glad to have another one of these. It's like my third or fourth of this style, but you can record and listen not a straight Walkman. Um, I did find the Clueless soundtrack, just I've never owned it. I thought it was time because one of my favorite bands ever, the Smoking Popes, they, I Need You Around. That's them on that soundtrack. Um, all right, let's get into some tapes because that's the other thing. It's going to get a little crazy. I'm going to go as fast as I can here because I went to this thrift store and when I checked out, she's like, oh, I didn't know we had audio cassettes back in. I'm like, yeah, because it was a full like they they have shopping carts they just fill with stuff before they put them on the shelves and i just dug through the shopping cart and i'm just making stacks and stacks <laughs> so first of all i i had this album but this is a different release of cinderella night songs i love it so much okay um autograph okay so there were two of this i left one behind and i went back again and somebody had already grabbed it uh apollonia six uh so that's an interesting group this is the power station. So this is Robert Palmer, you know, before he oh. went solo and was addicted to love. How about Rap's Greatest Hits, Volume 2? So this is like Red DMC. This is like all like the classic 80s rappers. Uh, so we had Apollonia 6. How about Vanity 6? <laughs> I think there's a theme going on here. I did grab a couple 90s ones. There was an LL Cool J album. Uh Jagged Little Pill. Can't leave that behind. I don't have my CD anymore, so let me get that. Uh, a Debbie Harry solo album. I've not heard this one before. Rockbird. It looks pretty cool, though. Uh, all right, getting back to the 80s, though. Two Samantha Fox albums. Okay. <laughs> I've always heard of Samantha Fox, but I didn't think I'd heard her music. Tiffany's classic album. Okay. Uh, that's another one I never owned. I was just heard, you know, and I'm more familiar with, I think I'm a clone now by Weird Al than I think we're alone now. Uh, how about some Hall and Oats? 
Okay, Bim, Big Bam Boom starts off pretty rocking. This guy I've never heard of, but Andy Taylor Thunder is just like kind of a straight ahead rock album. But Steve Jones, I'm trying to remember which band he's in. He said some 80s British band. Is he The Clash? Is he uh, one of, because I don't think he was in the Sex Pistols, but maybe he was. I don't know. Anyway, but Steve Jones is the producer, co-writer on that. Chicago's 17. The Eddie and the Cruisers soundtrack. Okay. So I have the VHS. Now I have the soundtrack. Speaking of soundtracks, I'll take a little diversion here. So I was able to pick up a copy of The Wildlife. This was Cameron Crowe's second film he wrote after uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. It stars Chris Penn. <laughs> so not the famous Penn, the other Penn who was in Footloose. So I got it. Eddie Van Halen did the soundtrack for the theatrical release, but because of rights issues, they didn't include all of that in the home video release, which I ended up buying a copy of because I wanted to see it. It's an okay movie. It's it's an interesting movie. Uh, but anyway, how about the Dragnet soundtrack? It has that famous rap in there, City of Crime, right? Uh, the About Last Night soundtrack, you know, so that's fun. And Action Jackson. Yeah, I have that VHS too. And of course, Disorderlies. We're going to 80s rap. There they are again. Although Bon Jovi is on this album. Like, it's not like it's a Fat Boys like album that they recorded original music for it. It's like they were it too busy making the movie, I guess. All right. How about some more Vanity? This person really liked Vanity, and I've listened to her music. It's terrible. She's not a good singer. <laughs> she looked great on screen, though. Uh, how, Pepsi and Shirley. I thought this was like Salt and Peppa, but it's more its more like they're actually singing, not rapping. But I was just like, what is Pepsi? Anyway, uh, a Wang Chung album, but not their big album. I think this was their follow-up. Uh, some Sheena Easton. Because he's like uh, Sheila E. These are all these like, you know, Prince protégés and things like that. I always heard about two copies of Corey Hart. Okay, this is his debut album, First Offense, right? Sunglasses at Night is on this, but it's two different releases on two different labels. Dolly Parton, okay. Uh, two albums by the band Saga. I was like, there's two of them. But they got a I, oh. the The Magic cover. Oh my God. I, I recognize that. I don't know when I saw it, but I've seen that somewhere. Oh. Probably on a, on a vital, I would think. Yeah. So. Donna Allen, don't know her work, but she looks like she's ready to give me some soul. Along with Lisa Lisa and Cult Jam. <laughs> Don Henley, okay. Got the Boys of Summer on there. This one I was really excited about. This is Scandal featuring Patti Smith. So it has the warrior on this, which was the opening theme to the uh, the Glow Netflix series. At least the they used it on the pilot. Uh, I also got two Stacy Q albums. If I'm getting <laughs> two Samantha Fox, I get two Stacy Q. Um, this was really neat. This is like sent to radio preview tape, Ooh. Ozzy Osbourne, Randy Rhodes tribute album. But this just like is select tracks. But this was obviously meant to go, you know, somewhere as a promotional item, which is really neat. So that was cause cool. hoping for more of those, but they weren't in there. Uh, I did also grab a bunch of singles. Uh, Jason, wish you were here, buddy. We got Spice Girls, Spice Up Your Life. We got In Excess, Need You Tonight. Okay. We got Keith Sweat. I want her. Uh, this one's fun. The Mission Impossible theme by the guys from U2, by half of U2. <laughs> um and then this one here, Lita Ford. I just picked up the 45 picture sleeve, and now I found the single of Kiss Me Deadly. But how about the Macarena? And yes, I played it for my kids while I taught them the dance. They're like, we know that. That's in Hotel Transylvania 3 or something. I was like, okay. Um, but last one on the tapes. This was another garage sale find. Still sealed from the late 80s. The Miami Vice soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> yes indeed look at that the glowing on crockett and tubs so that was really that was really great to find um i do have random odds and ends so i'm just gonna throw them out here real quick how about this this is a caterpillar you know those car games oh, yeah, yeah. So, so these were fun um 
G.I. Joe Extreme from the mid-90s. This was the villain. I bought this back in the day, so it was so fun to find that. Um, I did, after I saw uh, Deadpool and Wolverine, which I know you saw too, Kevin, we won't do any spoilers, but I found this for 50 cents at a garage sale. So this is the Blu-ray of the regular, Logan Noir, and then it has the the uh, movie and special features on like a DVD in the back. But then it also has a bunch of um, like very artistic black and white photos of characters from the movie. Like there's Logan, you know, it's just like, so it's like a book, you know, that they're being very fancy with. Um, at the same place I got Logan, I also got a big bird cookie jar. <laughs> What are you doing, Big Bird? My kids are like, can we use that for a real cookie jar? I'm like, it's kind of dirty. We'll try to clean it out. I don't know if it would survive a trip through the washing machine. Uh, also this morning, I, I have in my class, I, I, I have tiers of garage sales. And I was like, old lady garage sales are not for me, where it's all little glassware and clothes and doilies. Uh, so we, we walked through. There wasn't anything we wanted. But as I was walking out, I saw just kind of on this rack of clothes. The Batman Returns sleeping bag. Oh, so this is so great to have that in my Batman Returns collection. <laughs> like I, I considered buying it uh, when I was doing my 40th birthday Batman Returns celebration. Um, okay, last thing. Last thing, I promise. This is the big one. I could not believe what I was seeing when I walked into this garage sale. And found this item that I don't know. Was it commercially released? Did somebody's mom make it for him? This is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles the movie as a clock. This is the poster, and it has a clock installed in it. It's on a piece of particle board here. This is obviously in somebody's room from 1990 to 1993 or so. And then Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 came out. And they're like, no, thank you. But yeah. <laughs> crazy crazy items there's no way that's official it can't be right no i would have grabbed it too though yeah <laughs> all right man this well we always find the good stuff that's for sure so yeah next time around we will have all three of us i'm sure chris is accumulating a pile as we speak uh so there is more to come but make sure you stay subscribed here on geekster vision because there's so many other videos yes i'm in a lot of them but other people you know are, are contributing videos and they're really ramping up as we get to after the summer like it's there's going to be a lot more you know, contributions, new blood coming in to Geekster. So you can go over to geekster.com and uh, find out what is available there. Uh, but Kevin, if people want to find you online, where can they get connected? So if I'm on a social media, it's at Hellions Team and HelliansTeam.com is my home blog. Awesome. And you can find me at Hoju Coolander, or, you know, most of my stuff is on geekster.com. So you can track it down there by various podcasts, other exploits. But hey, thank you so much for checking out this video. And until next time, we'll see you later. This has been a presentation of Geekster Media.